Hey everybody, wanted to take a few minutes to go over all of the assignments that you need to complete here in week four. So the first item is the week four journal, which of course will be a follow-up to the week three discussion. Um, so when you go into the week four journal assignment instructions, you'll see the follow-up video inside the instructions. So you'll watch that video and then answer the questions for the journal. If you missed the week three discussion or you would simply like to view that image again, it will be located under the questions at the very bottom so you can take a look at it. Um, and the journals do Sunday at 11.59. The next item that you'll see is the assignment for discovering values and assumptions. And this goes along with all of the material in the week four module. So you'll be doing this in a Word document there'll be a file attached to the assignment instructions that you can use as your template if you want, um, but it is not a text submission. You'll have to upload a file in some way. So for this assignment, there are a couple tasks that you're gonna go through. The first one is on discovering assumptions. And remember, when we're talking about assumptions in terms of argument, we're talking about what the arguer, what the author, assumes about us, what they assume we believe in, what they assume we think, what they assume we value, what do they assume about us. And you have two different scenarios that you're going to work with. The first is about retirement accounts. So you have a claim and you have some support. The claim that we've been given is that retirement accounts should be in the hands of private companies and not the federal government. And the support for that claim is private companies can generate more money than government controlled accounts can. So that's why retirement accounts should be in the hands of private companies. They can generate more money. Your job is to think about what does the author of that claim, what does the author assume that we will think or believe about this claim and support, about this topic. What are they assuming we think, we feel, we believe, we value? And then type your answer on the lines there, and then ask yourself the second part here in italics, is the author correct that most readers would think or believe this? Or is the author way off base? explain your answer, right? So based on the claim and support, your first job is to figure out what are what do they assume about us as readers? What do they assume about us? And then the second part is, is that a valid assumption or are they totally off track? And then explain your answer. And then you'll do the same thing for number two. That one is about light pollution. So read the claim and the support and then think about the first question in italics. What does the author assume about us and give your answer. And then the second question in italics, is the author correct or are they way off base? Task two, we're going to be looking at discovering values. So again, remember in an argumentative context, we're, when we're talking about values, we're talking about ideals that the common person, that the majority value. So we value things like freedom, we value wisdom, we value um, knowledge, we value self-respect, right? So your answers in this section in task two are going to be just a list of words or phrases of things we value. And in the values and assumptions part two PowerPoint, slide three gives you a list of some of these types of values. So use that to help you come up with your answers. You might come up with something that's not on that list because it's not like an exhaustive list, but use that list to help get you thinking about these kinds of ideas. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the statements that you're given and think about what values are contained in those statements. So, for instance, number or letter A says, people should not litter. If we believe or if we agree with that statement, what kinds of 
values do we hold? And you're just going to list those. So again, your answers are going to be just a list of words or phrases, much like the words and phrases on slide three of the Values and Assumptions Part 2 PowerPoint. All right, so you'll go through that, and um, that's it for that assignment. Uh, it's not terribly difficult if you have gone through the material in the Week 4 module. Make sure that you're looking over those PowerPoints on Values and Assumptions, because it can get really tricky, because we sometimes use those words in a different way, depending on the context. So when we talk about values, you know, sometimes we're talking about like family values or community values, but in this context, we're talking about values in a very specific way. Same thing with assumptions. All right, so make sure that you are understanding exactly what we mean when we talk about values and assumptions in argument. And that way you'll know, you'll have a better idea of how to answer these. And if you've done that, then answering these will actually be pretty easy. Okay? Um, but again, that's going to be in a Word document and try to have it submitted Sunday night by 11.59. The next item for this week is Project Part 2. So you have chosen your topic and received my feedback on it in Project Part 1. If you have not done that yet, you need to do so as soon as possible. This, this project is it's going to keep moving. It's going to keep moving forward. And the farther you fall behind, the harder it's going to be for you to pull yourself back out and do well on this course project. And it's worth a big percentage of your grade. So if you haven't done project part one, stop what you're doing and go do that. Get my feedback on it, and then you can proceed with project part two. If you've already done that, then go ahead and get started on this. It's going to be in a Word document, and you can use the file attached as your template. Um, and there's quite a few steps to this, all right? So, step one has to do with your claim. So, step one, task A, says state your working claim. Like, in one sentence, what is your focused argument? Type it on the line there. Task B says, what type of claim is it? And here we're looking at, is it a claim of fact? Is it a claim of definition? Is it a claim of cause? Is it a claim of value? Or is it a claim of policy? And there in blue font are some questions you can ask yourself to help you figure out what type of claim you have. All right? Also, you can go back to the previous modules and look over types of claims again. I believe that was week two. Oh, maybe it was week one. Um, but try to figure out what type of claim you're dealing with. And keep in mind that an argument can, can be manipulated so that it fits different types of claims. So you might have this general argument in mind that you want to present to your readers, but depending on how you word the claim, that determines what type of claim you have. And it might be that you're thinking one thing that you want to do with this argument, but the way you worded your claim shifts it into another kind of realm that you don't really want to be in. So that just means you have to work on rewording the claim to make it fit exactly what you're envisioning for the argument. So work on that in you know, tap, step B there so that, or task B, and then I'll help you with it in the feedback. Task C is listing reasons to support your claim. Basically, what are your main points going to be? Right, so if I had a topic, you know, if my topic was, you know, college athletes should not get paid to play, what are my three main reasons, or two or four, however many main points I have, what are those main points? List them there in task C. Task D asks you to talk about what types of support and proof you're going to use. Are you looking at using a lot of logic, like statistics and data? Are you looking at using sort of like testimony and authority to 
to help back it up? Are you going to be using examples like anecdotes, allusions, illustrations? What kind of appeals do you think you'll end up using? Are you going to appeal to logic? Is there going to be any ethos, credibility? Are you going to try to insert any pathos, which is pulls at, you know, at the emotions? I would be, I would tread very lightly in using pathos with an academic uh, argumentative research paper. We mostly want to go for authority and logic <laughs> in these types of papers. But that's not to say that it, you know, has to be completely void of pathos. You just have to use it very thoughtfully. But what types of support do you plan on using to support your claim? List them there in task D. Task E, I want you to consider some opposing viewpoints, right? So list as many opposing viewpoints that you can think of and briefly explain each one, right? Why, you know, how does this opposing view differ from your claim, your point of view, right? So explain each one of them briefly. Step two then, asks you to get more involved with your support. And by that, I mean you need to start looking at sources. So task F says find two to three sources to support your claim, All right? I want you to list those sources with proper APA reference entry, okay? And underneath each reference entry you give, I want you to just in a, couple sentences explain why you're going to use that source. So if you have an article that you found that you're going to, that you think you're going to use in your paper, give me that article's APA reference entry, the way it would look at the end of your research paper on your references page. Type that entry out and then underneath it, in just a couple sentences, explain why you're going to use that source, right? You need at least two to three to support your argument. Task G asks you to find at least one source that supports an opposing viewpoint. And same deal, once you find that source that has that offers an opposing point of view, give me the APA reference entry for it and then in a couple sentences explain why it supports an opposing point of view and how you plan to use it. Like, are you going to make a concession to it and, you know, admit that they make a good point? Or are you going to offer a counter argument to what that source presents, right? So two, so at least two sources to support your own claim up in task F and at least one source that offers an opposing point of view in task G. Do your best on those APA reference entries and then explain how you're going to use each source underneath each entry. Right? And then step three is just potential problems. Right? So there in task H, I want you to discuss your concerns. Not your concerns with your topic, but your concerns with your process. You know, are you worried about time management? Are you worried about not finding good enough sources? Are you worried about the APA formatting? Are you worried, you know, just anything that you're worried about at this point in the process, all right? And then I will help address some of those concerns in my feedback. Um, so do your best to have that in by Sunday at 11.59. I know, you know, trying to find those sources, it might take you a little bit of time, but try to plan accordingly. The sooner you get Project Part 2 turned in, the sooner you'll get my feedback and know if you're in good shape to continue moving forward. All right. And of course, the last item for homework this week is the week four discussion. And for this one, you're going to be looking at a poster from a group called Moms Demand Action. Um, and you'll see the, the image and there's some text on the image and you'll see right above the image where I've typed it out for you in case you can't read it clearly. So study that image and think about the text, the words that are on it. And then you'll answer the seven questions that you've been answering every week. This week, though, think about question number four a little differently than what you may have in the past. Remember, question four is, ask, is asking, do you detect any assumptions in the argument? Um, 
now we've covered the lesson on values and assumptions. So see if you can apply that new knowledge to what's going on in this image, okay? But answer those seven questions, you know, answer them thoroughly, give it some thought, and uh, try to have that up by Thursday night at 11.59, and then don't forget to respond to two classmates before the discussion closes Sunday at 11.59. If you have any questions or run into any problems with any of the homework items this week, please let me know right away. Um, otherwise, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys submit for project part two, and um, I'm hoping everybody gets it in and everybody's good to go to keep moving forward, um, but otherwise you guys are free to go ahead and get started on the items for this week.